I'm not sure if you know how to do that, but that would have been great. Oh, actually, you're all recording it. Great. Okay, guys, I want to thank you so much for taking the time off your day to be on this call or this Zoom meeting. We're all learning. Hi, Daniel. I uh, just, want, to, just re, uh, want you guys to realize who's talking to us. This is Laura has uh, been with Danny for a while. She not only been with Danny, but she actually did network marketing before. She did a home-based business before. It was extremely successful at it. But she also did it the wrong way as well as far as the way she built it was really tasking to her with her time management and her skill set. So now – she learned a lot of skill set from Danny and now is definitely sold out on Danny like we all heart. And you guys know about Danny Johnson. I don't have to tell you more about that. But she worked very close to us the last time we went to First Step and Dynasty. We had, I believe, I can't remember how many people. It was a lot of people, over probably 40 people that went. And, I mean, marriage has been saved and people have been doing well. And all of us are using the script book or at least uh, we know about it or we've used it. And Laura is somebody that's helped me a lot to get back on track, especially when I'm completely off track. She's the one that kind of brings me back every time. So I, I'm very dear to her and uh, she really does care for us. She really does wants us to succeed so, and see us at the event and, and do great in our business and in our personal life. And that's what I like about Laura She's not just about business, but she wants you to succeed in your business and succeed in your personal life as well. And she goes right along the line with Danny Johnson, obviously, being around her all the time and being mentored by some of the top people like Danny. Uh, you, we have this. So anyways, just want to give her uh, that edification. Thank you so much, Laura, for doing this. We really appreciate you guys. Give honor where honor is due. And please, when she calls you, call back. Okay? <laughs> all right. All right. That's it. All y'all, I called you all. <laughs> so, um, cool. All right. Well, thanks so much, Mickey. I, um, you guys, so this came about because I was talking to Mickey, I guess that was last week. And I said, oh, okay. Hold on. Let me try to mute. Yeah, go ahead and mute me too. Mute everyone. Can I guess you can still hear me? Hopefully you can. I can't really see you. Um, anyways, okay, cool. So I had been talking to Mickey last week and I said, what's going on? I said, um, you know, I wanted to take uh, like time and effort and reach out to some of the people in the Enagic community. We've got summer coming. Summer's a uh, it doesn't have to be a tricky time, but it is. Uh, uh, summertime is for, for home business. And um, I said, how come nobody ever calls me back? Like, are they mad? Did I do something wrong? Because, you know, I, I saw a lot of your team out a couple months ago, Mickey, remember out, I guess it was in San Diego. And I was like, maybe I kind of blew them off. Like, I don't, I'm sorry if I did that. I'm always running from one place to the next. Anyway, I'm not offended. I'm not bitter. But I'm trying to help you. So, call me back. Anyway, um. So I had asked Mickey earlier this week, um, actually, I'm wondering if I can keep you unmuted, Mickey. Hang on. Mickey Wade, unmute. Me? Okay, I have you unmuted. Everybody else is muted. Cool. Just in case you feel like interjecting or something. Okay. Okay. Um, so I said, what, like, like, how's business? How are things going? What's going on out there? Um, you know, are people excited? Are people doing well? Are they frustrated? Are they confused? Are they playing mind games? Are they quitting? What's going on? I haven't heard from anybody. Hmm. And, um, we just had a, a couple of really good conversations. I feel like, um, I don't know. I just really love working with this team. I really honestly do. And I hate that y'all are so far away. Hmm. Like I can't just walk next door and see how you are. I have to call and I have to be conscious of what time it is because there's such a big time difference. Um, but there's a couple different aspects of uh, the business that I think are really important, and that's kind of why this call slash video was really designed for business builders, um, because there's product users all over the world of your product and every other stinking product out there. Product users um, are don't do anything, mm -hmm. right? And we are grateful for them. Like, how do you think McDonald's got to where they are? Product users, right? 
So um, you don't sit around your McDonald's and think, hmm, maybe someday somebody will want to own a franchise, right? Be grateful for the clients, be grateful for the product users, but your presentation might need to be a little bit different if you're getting serious, if you want to get serious about building your business um, and really moving forward with like a financial opportunity. And it is true that I did build my own uh, direct sales business. I come from the health, wellness, and I guess nutrition industry. I sold vitamins, pretty much is what happened. And um, from the very beginning, I didn't really have a lot of support. Majority of the people that were around me, like my friends, my family, whatever, um, you know, like it was really, it sounds so stupid now, but like I let them really get in my head and they would call me like, um, well, they would say stuff like, get your hippie stuff and go. And like now I think it's funny, but back then <laughs> I didn't know how that was funny and I got offended by it. Um, and from that time, I kid you not, it was really bad. I cried every single day just out of frustration because I didn't understand why people didn't get preventative health. So what I did as a very competitive person is I kind of did things the wrong way and I said, forget you, I'm leaving. I'm going to move out of this state and I'm going to go do this thing. You don't have to support me. That's fine, but I'm going to go do it anyways. And I did. However, because I was around so much negativity and so many like opinions, I, it really got to me and I, I, I really took to heart like what people thought about me. And so I, um, like when people, I would meet people in a new state and they go, Oh, what do you do? And I would like package it all pretty because I was so scared of what they would think about me if they really knew what I did. And the, a lot of that comes down to the fact that I didn't have a, I didn't have skill, right? When you present your business, like people call it a 30 second commercial, right? What's your 30 second elevator pitch? Um, <clears throat> that's a presentation. And if our presentation isn't something that people are attracted to, we've lost them. And it's really, really hard to go back and make another like good first impression again, because we already made our first impression, right? How many of you guys have been recruited into different businesses or people don't leave you alone about certain stuff? And like, you know, I mean, how many of you have talked to people about your business and then all of a sudden they don't call you back, they're not responding, they're not emailing you, whatever, right? So um, I built my business. I said, forget you. My skill level was very, very weak. And so I had to make up in numbers what I lacked in skill. Um, I think I feel like I've told you guys before, but I did write at 150 live presentations every single month. One, five, zero. That's how many presentations I did. And I made about $500 my first two years in business. So that makes me a really bad presenter. Um, but I didn't know it. I didn't know that I was saying all the wrong things. I didn't know that I was using all the wrong body language. I didn't know um, like what kind of impression that I was giving out to people. And again, it comes down to the fact that I did not have a skill level. Um, the guy that introduced me into my business uh, had been around about four, about four months longer than me. Um, which means his skill level was pretty poor as well. And so I learned from him everything that I should do. But how many of you guys remember what it was like when you were new and like you're getting going on this thing and you're investing some money into it and then you get it and you put it in your house, right? And uh, I don't know, I just feel like it's intimidating and it's a little bit, it's just a little bit scary and people ask you questions that you don't really necessarily know how to answer, but here you are recruiting other people into your business, trying to teach them how to be really successful, right? So it's really, really important that you guys have a set strategy with your, with your business. And the reason, um, another conversation that I brought up last week with um, Mickey is, um, you guys, we had a conversation like maybe earlier this year, I think it was probably January or February. I don't, I, I don't even know when it was. Anyway. Um, we talked about taking your business seriously. We talked about um, really honestly making a commitment to your business. Because here's the thing. I don't know how many of you guys are like an athlete, okay? But if you're an athlete or you have a kid that's an athlete or a brother or a friend or whatever it is that maybe played like high school or college sports, you don't go to soccer practice one time. 
Mm -hmm. um, you know, you don't go to a soccer camp one time. You don't go to math class one time. How many years do you go to math class? Over and over and over and over and over again. And how many of you guys remember going to a math class like for days, months, weeks on end and you still are like, I don't get it. I don't get this third power thing or this whole squared thing, right? How many of you guys, I just take calculus in college. I was like, I don't even know what's going on right now. I don't understand anything about what's happening with X's and Y's and Z's. Right? You have to go over and over and over and over and over and over again. Look at the people that play Olympic sports, right? I just saw an interview with this girl that was a gymnast. Um, and I actually, I just saw something with Michael Phelps too. Waking up every single day at 4.30 a.m. and jumping into a cold pool. Not once. Not for like even one year or not even for 10 years, but over and over and over and over and over again and learning new skills and finding new strategies and, and working on breathing techniques so you can go longer without having to take your head out of the water and watching his food and hiring a nutritionist and like all of these different things that go into being an athlete. But you and I don't see any of that. We just see the glory child on the podium getting his, you know, 450 uh, gold medal. And we're like, oh, he's so lucky. And oh, it would be so cool to be him and be so successful. You didn't see him every single day. We talked about taking your business seriously. Who wants to be a professional? Who wants to make this thing work? Who wants to live your life with a ton of freedom? Not a little bit of freedom. Because I built my business 100 hours a week um, to get to a residual income where I had freedom. <clears throat> and guess what it cost me? It cost me a hundred hours a week of my time. And it cost me missing out on funerals, weddings, baby showers, bachelorette parties, birthday, this and that, Mother's Day, Father's Day. I missed all of it for my business. I did. I sacrificed everything um, to create this really great, wonderful residual income. And I don't know that I can go back and say that it was really honestly worth it because I gave up everything in my life for that. Had I had a higher skill level, it would have been a whole different ballgame, but I honestly, I just did not know. I did not have anyone to help me, teach me, train me, work with me. It was totally a crap shot. It really was. It was all trial and error. The good news for you guys is, is that you don't have to go through that. Um, I'm, I will tell you everything what not to do. I remember it all very vividly. I have these conversations every single day. Do this. Don't do that. And we talked a few months ago about really taking your business seriously, really creating commitment and involvement in your business. And I really just need you guys to think about this when I ask how many of you still don't have business hours? Because we talked about it, I think it was January, right? Is that when we were out in San Diego? So January, February, March, April, May, that was four months ago. Four months ago, we talked about how every business in the world has business hours except us. And we sit around and we go, well, but I'm so frustrated and these people I'm talking to aren't doing anything. Um, this person said that they were interested, but then they never took action. And I don't know if I should do this and maybe it's not for me. And maybe I should just go be a nurse. Maybe I should go be a teacher. Maybe I should just, um, you know, go get a job as a waitress and be able to earn on cash tips. And, and maybe that's what I should do. Maybe this isn't just isn't for me right? It's not working for me. Is it it really? Is it not working for you or are we not working the business at all? Um, I just talked to this girl today, works in a nutrition company. She got a hold of me last week and she said, hey, I'm so frustrated. Can I please call you because I need to do something different. And I, I talked to her today and uh, she works her business five hours a week because she's got kids and stuff like that. And I said, okay, so you ran your business five hours last week. I said, how many people did you talk to in that five hours? And this is what she said. She goes, um, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> like, like, so very much so, like she didn't hear me. And I said, <clears throat> did, I, did I stutter? She said, no. Um, she said, I, I think about 10. And I said, well, why do you think about 10? Because remember, we also talked about tracking. So when you work your business five hours a week, but you have no idea what you did in that five hours a week, that's a problem. That's a, 
that's a problem. So she said, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know. And uh, anyway, I had the same conversation with her about tracking like months ago. And she said, I am tracking. She said, I'm tracking everything else in my life. I'm tracking what's going on with my kids. I'm tracking meal planning. I'm tracking my husband, this and that. And I said, but this is the one thing that's bringing you income. Mm. The one thing, because for her, she's a stay-at-home mom, right? She runs her business from home. I said, the one thing that's helping you contribute to your household is the one thing you are putting on the back burner. I said, what, is that, what does that say to your husband? Mm. Mm. And what does that say to your kids? So anyways, we're talking, and, and I, she said, I don't know how many people I talked to. And I said, well, how many people do you think you talked to? And she said, I, I think it was probably about 10. And I said, okay, so you think you talked to about 10, which is fine. But I said, how many of them did you physically talk to? <laughs> not email, not text, mm. not Facebook. How many people did you actually have a conversation with? One. I said, so I think we know what the problem is. And I told her, I mean, I'm going to be very honest, you guys. I don't even know how to sugarcoat things. So don't ever think I'm being rude. I'm just telling you the truth. I said, what you, what you say your problem is and what your real problem is in the business are two totally different things. Because she's like, I'm overwhelmed. I need to simplify things. I need a system. I'm like, you aren't talking to anybody. Mm. How do you plug people into a system when you don't have any people to plug into any type of system? Mm. And I said it real nice. Okay, don't think I'm mean. Um, but I use her because I, I was in the same spot as her. Okay, now I was doing 150 presentations a month. Whole different ballgame. But I reevaluated my business every day. Um, there were some days I was like, I don't really want to do my business. So I'll... I'm going to give myself today off because I deserve it and I'm going to start again tomorrow. Well, guess what I just did? I fell back on my commitment and I completely threw all of my consistency off. So mm. if you have not set business hours in your business, I'm going to tell you and be honest with you right now that if you really want to make something out of this business and you really honestly have like a passion and a drive behind helping people understand the idea of preventative health, um, and giving them an actual tool or resource that's going to benefit them, their family, help with disease, illness, weight issues, everything. But you're not doing anything with it. We're never going to get anywhere. You really will honestly be in the same spot. And think about a year ago. Where were you a year ago? Because I, I bet you some of you are frustrated because you feel like you're no further ahead right now than you were a year ago. We have to be willing to take action. So if you have business hours that you're not that, okay, if you have business hours and you're building your business, awesome. Now I'm going to really encourage you to work on tracking in your skill level. Okay. If you don't have business hours at all, and we still really honestly haven't started and we're kind of, I guess I want to say half-assing things, but I feel like that's not the best word to use. I need to, I need to find a backup plan for that word. Um, if you are kind of half-assing things right now, where, where do you think you're going to be at the end of this year? And that's a really scary wake up call. Um, but it's, it's, it's a place to start. I mean, wh what kind of business runs a business without business hours? Everybody has business hours. The landscaping company has business hours. My chiropractor has business hours, Hobby Lobby, McDonald's, you name it. Everybody has business hours. If we don't have business hours, we are not in business. I'm sorry. So ask yourself, do I have business hours? What are they? And are they consistent? Okay, they've got to be somewhat consistent. And on top of that, are you tracking? Okay, um, I am not somebody that was big on like spreadsheets and documents and things like that. I just used sticky notes and a pen, right? And, um, and, a, and a, a B, like men, I booked them for a presentation. Um, M meant I left them a message. And I would just put little tick marks. Is that what they're called? Whatever. You know what I mean? Um, and that's how I would track so that I had an idea of what was going on in my business. Um, uh, but the bottom line is, is, is that your skill level is a direct reflection on where you are in your business right now. So if you are somebody that feels like you're talking to a lot of people and you're still not where you want to be and you're not really seeing results, um, you really probably need to go back and reevaluate your presentation. That was my problem too. So I get it. 
Um, constantly talking to people, never getting results. No one ever does anything, right? People would be like, um, I'm going to think about it. I'll get back to you. And I was like, okay, great. Thinking they were really honestly going to get back to me. And guess what? They never called me again. Why? Because they didn't want to work with me. Why didn't they want to work with me? Because I didn't know what I was doing. I was an amateur. Um, I, I, uh, I, because I cared so much about what people thought, I think people could feel that. And on top of that, I was broke. Because I built my business for two years without making any money. So I had nothing. And I really started looking at people like a dollar bill. Like I would be like closing, right? And I'd be like, oh, just do it. You know, because in reality, I'm looking at Mickey and I want him to get started so bad because my phone's about to be turned off. Mm. And I can't pay my bills. And I looked at everybody like they had big dollar signs on their face. Like, please, if you would just join my business. I could at least pay my rent. My phone can go for about 30 days, but like I can at least pay my bills. And this is exactly where, um, you know, I have come in is uh, using a training system. And most of you know that, um, that I work with dannyjohnson.com. You know, I come from home business. Like, you know that you have a resource. And um, even though some of you don't all the way take advantage of contacting me or, or, or just brainstorming like what can I do and where can I go and how do I create more exposure and whatever like that's okay but I hope that you at least know that I'm here and that I am happy to help you in any way that I possibly can but I'm I'm not going to I'm not going to beg anybody anywhere to do business ever even with me personally um, and you shouldn't either right some will some won't so what like who cares some people want to drink nasty disgusting water and I it's very sad I get it but are we going to just, are we going to argue about it? Or are we just going to agree to disagree? Because it's hard. You know, how many, of, how many people have tried to, tell, tried to sell you cigarettes? And you're like, oh, I'm not interested. And they're like, but why? You're not into it. And you want them to just leave you alone. Okay, so let's do the same thing and be professional business owners. When you walk into a store, people say, hey, can I help you? They don't go, oh my gosh, try this shirt on. Oh my gosh, here's a small, medium, and a large. Let's take it back to the dressing room. Here, let's get you some pants to go along with it. They don't do that. I mean, hopefully they don't do that. They don't normally do that to me. So um, a couple different things. Number one, uh, if you're serious, okay, if you're not really serious, you can kind of like disconnect. Um, because I know that some of you really want to make this work. And I know that your heart really honestly is in helping people and working with people. And I want to give you um, as, as, much, um, as much as I can. So um, for starters, like I said, I want you to create business hours. Okay, and I'm gonna do follow up. I still got that list. I'm gonna call you all again. <laughs> and I'm gonna ask you and find out, okay? Because you really do. You need to have business hours, number one. Number two, you really do just you really do need to track your results. Number three, you are going to notice a humongous difference when you work on your skill level. And I know that some of you have been to first steps to success. Some of you have plugged in, some of you have learned certain techniques, right, with like form and you've learned gems and different things like that. Um, but find out what, uh, really mastermind with yourself and find out like what you um, are struggling with. Because whatever you're struggling with is the one thing that's probably the most uncomfortable for you. For me, it was closing. I could not close a deal for the life of me. Um, and so I had access to a training that taught me how to get good at closing. And once I got good at closing, I realized how horrible I was at it in the very, very beginning. Um, and we've got a couple of different resources that are really, really specific to certain things, right? If you want to learn how to become an expert presenter, we will show you how to become an expert presenter. Um, if you want to become a big business professional, you got to get good at follow-up. But like, how often do you follow up? Um, how long do you wait before you maybe follow up again? When is it too much? These are skills, okay? Look at a realtor. A realtor can sell a $150,000 house, but that doesn't mean they can sell a million dollar house. It's a different skill level. You have to obtain a different type of client that would be selling a million dollar house versus a $100,000 house, right? Um, so what I wanna do really quickly, just for a quick second, if I can, well, doggone it. I don't know what Grace's number is. It's 714. I know that. Hold on. Let me grab the number real quick. Okay, Grace, are you uh, on? Let's see. Grace, where? 
Laura, you want now? Yeah, when, what's the last four digits of your phone number? Oh, it's 0175. I just texted you like a little bit ago. Oh, okay. Well, I'm sorry because my phone is on airplane mode during videos like this. Um, oh, God. No worries. No, it just, it's that it rings. <laughs> so, um, okay. I wanted to just take an opportunity. We don't really have a whole lot of time, um, but I know that you've done some really outstanding things lately. I know that you've taken your business seriously. I know that you're really a more of a professional. <laughs> Um, and so I want you to just take a quick, I don't know, like maybe 60 seconds and just tell me and your friends here, like what happened? What, what, what shift, what happened to you and how come before nothing was happening and now you've got momentum, you've got people getting started. Like what, what was it? Was it the skill? Was it the commitment? What happened? I think it was a combination of things. It was um, me learning to be just a better friend and contacting people with no ulterior motive in my heart. I just genuinely wanted to find out how are they doing, um, what's going on with their life, and if I were them at this moment, what would I need from a friend, or how could I feel supported or encouraged or believed in? And so I just started calling people because I have a huge list of numbers already. And um, I'm setting time just to follow up, like an hour and a half, two hours a day, just to follow up. Say hi, how's it going? I was just thinking of you. And then um, that was it. And then also exploring more things in my heart that have prevented me from being more free and more at peace um, and more fearless. And so I've had two weeks of some deep, deep time to do that. And now I feel just very grateful and liberated and that peace. So then when you have that internal peace, then people sense that as well. Okay, so you turn into a genuine person, um, which is typically, and not that you weren't before. It's definitely not that you weren't before. It's just that before, I think most people are trying too hard because they just don't know any different. Um, and that's, that's very much so how I was, right? I looked at people like a dollar bill. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't care about you. I care about me. And I'm about to be homeless. So would you please just buy this starter kit, for goodness sakes. Um, and that honestly kind of is how it was. But what I didn't realize is, is that if somebody would have just been like, look, you're trying too hard to take care of yourself. And people know that. You have to try harder to make people feel like, A, you care. And, and B, you have to find their need. Their need and what you think their need are are two totally different things. And when you try harder to really find, like here's an example. Um, I, I've got a company that I work with. This just happened a couple weeks ago. Um, this lady wanted non-toxic cleaner. So this girl sent her non-toxic cleaner, but she never dug any deeper to find out why do you want toxic cleaner? Turns out she's got a four-year-old with autism. And that's why she wants to go non-toxic. But because this girl didn't dig any further down, she never even found what the real honest root problem was. Um, and so really finding the need, being their friend, um, creating that trust and that relationship. But a lot of that, again, it comes in, um, I think a lot of you have the script book. If you don't have the script book, I'm going to tell you that's probably the biggest resource that you need in business because it tells you exactly what to say but it also tells you exactly what not to say. Like, what do you, what, what would somebody be saying that makes you sound like a total amateur, right? Like an unskilled, um, here's an example. Hey guys, join my team. That's a good one. Um, you know, I was telling Mickey about how this guy keeps texting me, asking me to join his business, but he's like doing it in a nonchalant way. And it's just, it's just funny because he doesn't know any different. Okay, so I'm gonna really, really encourage you to, um, to check out the script book um, we are running a promotion right now. So I don't know, some of you I know have been plugged into Danny Johnson for a while, so you might have stuff already. Um, but the script book bundle is like 97 bucks and then six figures in six months, which is kind of like snippets of a live training and it covers all of our different areas. That's also 97 bucks. So it's like almost, what does that mean? One, 190, something like that. 
we are running a special promotion where we can get you both of those two things in a bundle for 137. So it's like a $60 discount. You cannot get it online. You would need to contact me directly, but I'm happy to get that out to you. Or if you have new people, here's the thing is some of you guys are on this right now. Um, I've got Mickey. I see Daniel, Augustine, David, Grace, Octavius was on. I'm not sure if he still is or not. Uh, I don't know where Frank is. Where's Frank? Uh, but you guys, where's, where's, the, where's the new people? We need new, new, fresh, exciting blood. And I know that the business is hard. I know that you have to go through a lot of numbers, but that's why having business hours is set to keep you on track. If you talk to 10 people every single day during your business hours, that's 50 people a week if it's just Monday through Friday. If you talk to 50 people a week, that's 200 people a month. Don't you think that you would have some good leads out of 200 people a month? But if we're not working, I mean, what is it that we're honestly even doing in the business hours that we're putting in? And I'm only here because I'm just trying to help. I'm trying to go, what, what is it? Is it that, is it that, you know, like something tragic happened and so um, people are distracted somewhere with family? Um, did, did they like magically quit the business uh, is, you know, I mean, there's variables. I know people get sick and stuff like that, but, um, I'm not seeing a ton of, of new and because I come from this business because I have a huge passion to watch people have success. You guys know what it's like when you have somebody in your team hit a new promotion and, um, and they finally get recognized and like they're teary and everything because like, it's just so emotional. Our business is hard. It's emotional. There's a lot of rejection. I know I've been doing it for 15 years. I get it. And I want nothing more than to watch people have real freedom and real flexibility and a really good income, um, because you're a professional. But the majority of that income is gonna come from new. New people getting started, new people that you can educate, new people that are looking to raise their awareness because guess what happens when you talk to someone that's new? They can introduce you to 500 people you've never met before. But instead, a lot of us keep going back to the same person we talked to a year ago that was cool for a little bit, then they fell off the bandwagon. Now we're going back to them trying to revive them out of the dead which is fine. I don't, I don't ever give up on people, period. But guess what? They introduced you to their 500 people like a year ago. So new, new people, new blood, new enthusiasm. That means a new level of commitment. It means a new level of engagement, which is setting business hours. Um, and engaging with your team members, right? F find them. Um, go, go out with them, um, invite them over, go meet with them, show them how their stuff works, talk to them about health and wellness, um, relate to their story, find their need, create a friendship, friends first, business will follow. But if we're not putting the time in and we're not putting the commitment in, where are you honestly going to be another year from now? And I hope that that gives you guys anxiety because it gives me anxiety. Um, and I just felt like I wanted to take some time to let you guys know, number one, I care. Number two, I'm trying to do everything I can on my end um, to prepare you and give you the tools and resources that you need. But um, I can't build it for you. Um, I, wish I, I wish I could, sort of. But, you know, I, I built my business 100 hours a week, and I'm not going to go back to that. That was not wise at all. Um, but I just really want to encourage you guys to get serious about this stuff in the next 30 days because summer is coming. And summer is a really easy time to have excuses, right? Kids are out of school. We're going on vacation. We're taking some time off. Um, whatever. Your schedule is a little bit different. And, um, and mine is too. So I understand that. But summer is also a very, very dead time of year in our industry. And so if you take your foot off the gas and don't get serious about your business, nothing's going to happen until like September. So, I mean, obviously it's a personal choice, but September is another four months away, May. Yeah, four months away. So four months from now, we're going to be starting from ground zero because we don't have any momentum. And so um, <clears throat> when I say set business hours and stuff like that, this is what I'm going to maybe encourage you guys to do <clears throat> is um, make a like make a list. 
Become someone who's like a to-do lister so that you've got it and you're looking at it. How many times have you like thought, okay, this is what I need from the grocery store, and then you forgot your list. And then you go home and you realize you forgot three things off the list because you could only remember so much, right? So if you, in your mind, think, okay, I need to call Mickey, I need to call Daniel, I need to call Augustine, and I need to follow up with Grace because she got some stuff like whatever, six months ago, I need to, whatever. But you don't write it down. Things happen, the phone rings, the kid starts screaming, whatever it might be. And now all of a sudden, you have contacted Daniel, you contacted Augustine, you contacted Grace, but you forgot about Mickey. And Mickey could potentially become the next big, huge leader, but because he felt like nobody cared and because he felt like nobody was creating engagement with him, he didn't know what to do, he didn't know where to go, and so he kind of fell to the wayside. And that's how we make people feel many times. So I really encourage you to write down every single day what you're gonna do. And if it means I'm gonna call 10 people, cool. Um, if you're gonna use the flyer system and you're gonna build flyers, great. How many are you gonna do? Um, I've got four calls to return. Great. Write those four people down and cross them off as you go. Even if you're not getting the best results, just start. It takes time to create momentum. Um, my, they always told me my paycheck was 90 days away. It takes time to create momentum. It takes time to kind of fill the hopper. It takes time to get into a rhythm and a routine. So stop reevaluating after two weeks or a month. You have to give it 90 days. And so what I'd really like to challenge every single one of you to do is to, to give it 90 days. Um, and so I think like maybe mid-August, I would really like to revisit this conversation. Um, and over the next week, I'm gonna reach back out to every single one of you and I'm gonna find out exactly where you are. And 90 days from now, I am gonna make sure that I follow back up with every single one of you because I'm gonna prove to you that with business, every single company has up times, every company has down times. Every company has good days, some have bad days. But the point is, is, is that if you create some sort of system and some sort of routine and some sort of steadiness, you'll, you'll have no idea where you could potentially be. Um, and the last thing I wanna finish with is this um, lady. Her name is Jean. I talked to Jean like a month ago. And I wanted to get her to first steps. And she said, I don't have any money, whatever. And um, when it comes, come to find out, Jean just turned 60 in March. So she just kind of had a big milestone, you know? And so I'm just being her friend, right, at this point. And I'm like, oh my gosh, how was your birthday? Do you have crane kids? Yada, yada. And she was like, it was the worst day that I've had in a long time. And I said, why? Because 60 is a big milestone. That's like, that's, that's great. You know, you've got kids you're proud of, grandkids you're proud of, like, you should be proud. Why are you not proud? And she said, because I am no further ahead right now than I was when I was 30, financially. And she said, I've got kids and I've got grandkids and I want to move and I want to live in a safer neighborhood. And, um, you know, like I, I stress out about money all the time. All of my free money goes to my kids, my grandkids, because with 17 grandkids, you've got like birthdays, like every single month, um, and a new event, like all the time. <laughs> And she said, I'm just so sick of being so, like, feeling pathetic. And she said, I'm so sick of waking up every day feeling like I have nothing to be excited about. I have nothing to be proud of. Yeah, I've got great kids, and that's cool. But when you are stressed out and worried about money nonstop every single day, she said, it really starts to take a toll on you. And she said, there are days I have contemplated what my options are because she said it's not fun. And so I really encouraged her to come to First Steps. Um, she did make it just recently out in Washington, D.C. So we are now working on a couple things with her time management, which goes back down to um, business hours. Uh, we are, we're going back in through her, her financial like system, right? Her uh, bank statements and things like that, um, which is all part of having a system and a skill level. Because if she had the skill level to be debt-free, she'd be debt-free but she's not debt free. If she had the skill level to own a business or have be a successful business owner, she would be. Some of you guys are skilled and you're successful and you're professional to the point where you're making a six figure income. But if you wanna be a multimillionaire, that's a different skill level than just a six figure income. We constantly have to be growing. 
So I'm gonna really challenge you to make some decisions, change your schedule, look at your routine, what's working, what's not, write these things down so every day you see this is what needs to happen, this is what I need to get accomplished. Um, and I'm gonna reach out to every single one of you, uh, find out where you are, find out you know, what we need to do to make this an option and moving forward together. And then we're gonna revisit this exact same meeting uh, uh, 90 days from now. And um, you guys, I am, I'm completely in. Um, I'm locking arms with your team right now, whether you like it or not. And um, we're gonna make this thing happen because it's true. People need you way more than you need them, but they can't buy from you if they don't even know what you do. They can't buy from you if they don't know what you sell. You, you, don't, you can't use them as a testimonial about how they overcame this issue and that issue and this cancer and that disease because we're not doing business with them yet. So it's important to really challenge yourself to expect more because if you keep accepting where you are right now, you really will probably still be in the exact same spot 90 days from now. And I hope that that is a painful thought for you. Um, because it's certainly a painful thought for me and I, I have higher expectations out of this group of people. You guys are incredibly professional. Um, I love seeing you every time I'm out in California and, um, and I really honestly am here to help you and to be with you and to support you. Um, I'm here to help with three-way calls. I'm here to help with edification. I'm here to help with the system. I'm here to help with anything. This is my challenge to you. So I'm going to follow up with all of you again in the next week. Um, if you were on my list, I guess if you weren't on there, we need to find out who's on this call, Mickey. Can we probably, can we do that somehow? Find out who called in. Oh, wait, hold on, you're muted. Your report on your Zoom. Okay, cool. All right, so I'll get that off to you and then you can pinpoint who they are. Okay. Um, but that's, but that's what, what? Yeah, I'll find out too. Yeah, so. Um, I don't know. I just want you guys to know how much I love working with this team. I mean, every time I, I can see Augustine and Mickey, and I feel like every time I look at you guys, I just, I don't know. I'm like, I get the warm fuzzies. I don't know. You guys are just such good people and good hearted, like godly family men. And I just appreciate that so much. So it's like, let me help you with the financial side so that you really honestly can enjoy the, the greater things in life. And you're not sucked into your business a hundred hours a week, the way that I was. So um, I'm going to follow up with you all of you. And um, we're going to do this again in, um, in 90 days. So I'm going to ask you some tough questions. And uh, I hope that you guys are prepared, that you're writing things down, that you're really thinking about, you know, your schedule, what you want and how you're going to get there um, so that we can really put a plan together for every single one of you. So Mickey, do you want to end with anything? Yeah. I want to just thank you so much for everything. This was such an amazing call. And it was very valuable for those of you guys that are listening. Um, I see the value of this with, cause I've paid for so much coaching in the past. I've been to, I mean, I've paid for so much things. This right here is so such a high value. I mean, it's, we have this at no cost to us. So you've got to start seeing that. I know I'm seeing it now more of the, how much value this is. So for me, I'm excited. And it's totally what I was praying for is like, okay, to be in track, to keep track of my time, to keep track of where I'm going. Cause you're right. I mean, we're five months in the year already. I'm like, Oh snap. Where did a month, where did a year go? So I'm excited. And uh, 90 days from now, I believe we need to also have new guests on the line and I want to bring some new people and share it and hopefully we could get this video so we could share with our new prospect we could share for those people that are just getting in the business and share with our team so next time we do this call we'll have a lot more people and we could be an example of saying hey i followed what the call said here i got these new people on the call so i really appreciate everything you did appreciate your heart and really caring for all of us and from the team to everyone else, including myself, we definitely, I apologize for not really doing the good follow-up with you. And I uh, just appreciate your heart and thank you for just taking care of us. You're so welcome. I'll talk to you guys all soon. Have a good day. You thank too. You. Bye.